Hello everyone, I'm the Yuaki Gamer of KJC Esports and joining me today for Into the Scene Overtime is Derek of South Built Esports with regards to Week 1 Playoffs of VCT Philippines Stage 3. So, welcome Derek. Um, good afternoon. Mm -hmm. oh, thanks so, for having me here. <laughs> yeah. um, with the recent playoffs being the actually debut appearance of South Built Esports, um, is it okay if I ask, um, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys have been around for three months so far in the Valorant Esports scene? I mean, uh, yeah, it's around that time, so. Mm. And for before the playoffs, you guys had three months. I mean, you guys have uh, F prior FPS experience with CSGO, but how was the preparation for VCT like for you guys? Um, so uh, prior to the weeks before uh, the VCT, like um, the whole event started or after qualifiers, uh, we had our schedule like full of uh, other community tournaments because uh, we joined a lot of tournaments like big or small, uh, just to gain um, experience about the game and how like uh, things would be um, during tournaments. So uh, our schedule was uh, really <laughs> packed and uh, unfortunately, I think um, that led to like some sort of uh, uh, kind of burnout. So we had, mm -hmm. to, we had to take a break, uh, a few days of break uh, in between um, the community tournaments and the VCT. Mm. So, like uh, before, we only had a few days of practice, of solid practice leading into uh, the VCT. So, uh, yeah, this, that's some, a bit unfortunate, but yeah, mm. it is what it is. Well, I mean, like just for three months, I think being able to debut already instantly to the <laughs> VCT playoffs is like quite the achievement already. Um, yeah, I'd say so. And you guys, uh, as I've said to the viewers also that don't know, um, the South Belt Esports team uh, is not just a no-name team. They are uh, a team or roster composed of previous CSGO professionals. Um, with the switch to Valorant though, what are some unique challenges the team might have faced that's <clears throat> you know unique to Valorant and was not present when you guys were screaming, practicing for CSGO? Yeah, I think the first, like the major uh, difference is the uh, the agents and the abilities. Uh, so like for in CSGO, um, you know that everyone had the same stuff, everyone had the same utilities. So um, it's it was really important that, uh, you know, like each of you know how to do everything. So when we switched over to Valorant, like you only, uh, there's only one like um set of agents that are smokers there there are only a few there are only few agents who can flash who can uh, who can like entry who can get uh, information so uh, one problem we had was how like how we adjusted on uh, each of our playstyle because in CS:GO our roles were there were the roles were like kind of not that specific like for example mm -hmm. you could be a support but during uh, the middle of the round you could be the entry or you could be like the second guy trading mm -hmm. like uh, everything in CSGO is really really flexible like the rules so that's what our that's what, that's the first difficulty that we encountered like the specific agents and abilities and the play mm -hmm. style of um, the game uh, the game Valorant itself so um, I think that's, that's that's the most part really. Like it's mm. just the abilities and the heat <laughs> of each agent's head. So personally for you though, um, while you guys were like figuring out your roles, I'm sure you guys you know spent some time you know grinding ranked or grinding unrated on your own time. <laughs> Was there a agent that you felt like oh this this one's for me, this role's for me? <clears throat> uh, yeah, from the start. Since I started playing Valorant, I just chose like uh, the smoker or the omen because I was a support in CSGO and mm -hmm. when I first tried Valorant, uh, I tried playing omen because I thought he had smoke, he had flash, so mm -hmm. it's a, like I thought it was kind of a CSGO, so I just chose omen and when we switched over, like um, Meryl was um, like omen as uh, like a smoker. Mm -hmm. so. 
I haven't I haven't tried any other role. Mm. But some would say that the controller role is kind of sometimes the most, uh, not to be rude, but sometimes people say it's the most boring role. You know, you're just in charge of like, oh, place a smoke here, place a smoke here. You just trade me out. Um, what can you tell or share to people about like the smoke support or controller role? Like who might be, you know, discouraged that maybe this role's not for me. How can they find joy in being the controller? I think um, whenever you play, uh, if you're in a team and you think uh, you want to be the the controller or the smoker, like um, it, it's really important that you understand the importance of your role because uh, whenever you're, if you're the smoker, like well, you, it's not that you can't die, but you you should try to not get picked off early because uh, if you get picked off early and then your team will, uh, will won't have any smoke for the rest of the round so it's really important that you know uh, you know how important you are to the team while like maintaining the balance of not being too passive to the point that like you're not gonna enjoy the game so mm-hmm. i think it's just really important that you find the balance the perfect balance between being aggr- uh, being not uh, being not that passive and while like you you don't want to die of course so uh, i think yeah that's really it and then um moving on to the first game you guys had in the quarterfinals with sb empire the if i if vlr.gg was correct and when i rewatched it you guys were in charge of the first map pick and you guys picked split um which is not you know not everyone usually initially picks split as the first map especially in a best of three what was the plan there for that map pick um so uh, our split uh, split is one of actually our best map or our comfortable pick so uh, it was a no-brainer for us to pick split but uh because uh we during uh community tournaments or other like other tournaments before we cd whenever we chose split like we really felt that uh, we were always in control and we were just really comfortable with the map and how mm. um we play it and uh, how other teams aren't that comfortable with it so yeah we just uh it, it was a no-brainer really uh, just to speak mm. to pick uh, split Sadly, I think SV Empire was also was very comfortable on split. So, <laughs> and then um, you guys, uh, the Philippine meta for a team compositions is kind of a mix. Some like using like really aggressive compositions, and some like using the global meta of like the post plant team composition. Um, SB joined, you know, three months in, where there's. It was a moment of like a meta shift. People aren't really sure if the post plant meta will still be a thing. Um, in the Philippines, uh, some teams are still running the aggressive double duelist. Uh, was there a struggle? Again, you did say that there is a, a challenge of trying to choose who plays what role, but was there any extra challenge in thinking of, oh, what team comp did we actually have to do? Um. In the, uh, during the our be- beginning of our Valorant run, uh, we just chose to uh, we we all agreed to pick the du- double duelist style because mm-hmm. we think that that's the most that's the simplest way to play Valorant. You just have two people mm-hmm. like trying to create space for the team, and since uh, a lot of teams, like most if not all Filipino teams, were running it, so I think it wasn't that hard to like find uh demos or replay like we couldn't it's not that hard to find demos to study especially mm. like sentinels were the best team were running it all the time so uh we we thought of ourselves to uh not to get things too complicated uh, complicated mm. so uh, yeah we just chose double duelist and we we just didn't want to over complicate things since mm. we're uh, new to the game And with the addition of KO, because week two will allow KO this time around. And I think he has the most CS style flash or a kit that doesn't really require that much um, overthinking for someone who's played CS for a long time. Is, you know, without leaking anything, is KO something you guys are planning to pick up for week two or? Um, most probably, uh, KO still like a kind of uh, 
stick of mystery since uh, mm. there there wasn't a, there's still not a lot of teams that are picking it uh, in VLR. I think there's only like five KOs still uh, like recorded, so mm. there's not a lot of demo regarding how the meta would shift mm. uh, when he's gonna get introduced. But I think KOs uh, are really like um, when 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 KOs gonna get like allowed to pick in VCT or in other tournaments I think KO is one of the most he's gonna play an important role like mm. he has a lot of uh, his kit allows him to um, like flash he, he has kind of a molly like uh, mm. so he's a really good uh, agent to pick for map control and even during side takes because of his silence so I think he's a really uh, good agent, so mm. most probably he's gonna get picked for sure. So uh, currently, um, since you guys did want to go for the aggressive double duel list, because you know there are vods out there, um, will we see SBE try to innovate, try to create their own style of team compositions, or for the most part in the early, you know, early days of uh, your Valorant esports career, are you just guys gonna go for what's more comfortable for you guys? I think. Um about uh, Asian comps, I think the most important thing is to balance what's best for the team while maintaining the comfortability of each player. So, uh, most yeah, it's gonna be it's it's the ideal idea that uh, we will have a large like we have a number of agent comps to uh, pick. But I think what's best is really just to pick what's comfortable while um, making sure that it's one it's still it's a good comp so mm. i think i think comfort comfortability is is gonna be like uh, our main like our main priority mm -hmm. and then with the game map 2 moving on to game map 2 it was ascent and you know after the first map i think some people were going oh this is gg for you know sbe i mean they're a new you know they might be cs gods but you know in valorant they're just new and you guys went zero five on defense and you know people were some of your fans might be uh was feeling down but then you guys made it you know you won seven straight rounds <laughs> was what was the is sbe like a team that takes a while to warm up because you know csgo had like f the max round is per half is 15. so are you guys a team that takes a while to warm up or was there like a change that you guys did to get those seven straight rounds uh so uh, i think our team in general like even before Valorant in, like in CSGO, we were always a team that uh, heavily relies on momentum. So mm. um, we usually take a while to warm up. Like uh, we even lose, we, we even lose like um, games or halves completely. And um, as long as we we're still like uh, we still won't give up, uh, mm. we always had a chance to come back. So. Um, during uh, we went, when we were down zero, zero five, uh, mm. we, we were all just like um, like it's still way too early like to decide the game. So let's just uh, play it out and like see what happens. So fortunately, we we came back from the uh, zero five to to take the half seven five. So. And then, sadly though, on the attacking half, I think you guys were having a hard time um, taking control of the site um, to plant the spike. What are the general challenges from switching from CSGO to Valo in terms of the map? Because I, I play a bit of CSGO myself and the map in CSGO feels wider and there's like mm -hmm. more options when it comes to taking a site. Well, here in Valorant, you have like one, two entrances and they're really tight choke points. What have been the challenges, let's say, on this uh, on Ascent? Because you guys, I think, went out of the five percent games in VLR. This is just from VLR. You've won two. So, is there something you guys don't like about attacking on ascent? I think uh, we just haven't really figured out how, like, to play to move to play uh, ascent in the mm. current meta. Like, uh, since the current meta is. Phoenix and Sky is a really good pick for the current beta. So, mm -hmm. um, when teams, whenever teams are running it, 
sometimes we have a hard time like deciding whether to avoid like certain agents or uh, certain areas of the map. So whenever like during the attacking side that came, uh, we we were just uh, lost really, and uh, we hadn't uh, we 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 didn't have a good uh, answer to their setups and their like uh, traps inside. So I think uh, map like in general like the map control and how certain areas were being like their their setups in certain areas were like really solid like mm. we knew that they really prepared for that map so uh, i think uh, yeah yeah hmm. uh, but you know you guys i think showed everyone though on your debut uh series that sb is a team to watch out for i mean three months of just shifting and then you're uh yeah, you guys were able to get into the playoffs. I think uh, people who followed as well would see you guys winning or getting top threes in the community tournaments. But I have to ask, in three months in, how are you liking Valorant personally? Um, for me, uh, I, I enjoy Valorant. Like it's a it's a new challenge. Like uh, learning the game, learning how the different agents, uh, learning a completely different like play style uh, it's a challenge that i enjoy so i think i enjoy rather mm -hmm. and uh, you know is even other pros in csgo have been moving to Valorant. like i think nbk is one of yeah, those okay and then um I've, I've asked this to uh rabbit and i've asked this to e monster but could i ask you your ranking for from top one favorite map to least favorite map for you for now, uh, I don't really have a favorite map. Mm -hmm. I think uh, for me, like the top four, like they're they're all equal maps. Like Bind, <laughs> um, Ascent, uh, Split, and what's one more? Ice maybe Box. Icebox. Most probably There's Icebox would be my favorite, and maybe mm. I think Breeze as well. I think the map's quite uh unique in terms of how other the other maps in valorant are so i think it's a fresh um like fresh breath of, breath of air uh, mm. in terms of like how the how the map's gonna be played out and how about the haven you know having three sites how did you like that coming from the traditional always two sites uh, map design <laughs> Uh, Haven's like uh, a bit unique since um, the map's really wide and there's a lot of well, like gaps or choke points that you have to cover. So like uh, garage is really important while you need to you, you need to maintain C long control and you may you need you you need to make sure that B is still secure while you have to take <laughs> a short or a long. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a bit of interesting map, but. I think uh, the map's designed kind of um, in a way that although there are three sites, you don't uh, it, each site is like manageable. Like, mm. so I think um, it's an interesting but a good a good map. Mm. And then now uh, to uh, because you guys were eliminated in quarterfinals, uh, you guys don't get seeded on two week two playoffs and have to do another round of qualifiers. Is there anything you'd like to say to your fans and to the supporters of South Built Esports who want to see you again on week two playoffs? Um, so first of all, uh, we'd, we'd like to thank um, the fans, really, um, whoever, uh, everyone who supports us, the whole S um, South Built Esports roster. Um, of course, so we're also we were also disappointed by our appearance, uh, how we did in the recent GCT playoffs, but uh, we'll make sure to. Um, work hard and show a better uh, South Build eSport uh, team uh, in the upcoming qualifiers and playoffs. So uh, thank, thank you. you. So once again, I'm the Wacky Gamer, and this was KJC eSports into the scene overtime with Derek of South Build eSports. Thank you and bye. Thank you.